This episode of Rules of Success is brought to you in part by Hope Gold Coin. Using the Omni protocol that overlays the Bitcoin blockchain, the Hope Gold Coin is a growing digital currency with its proceeds providing funding for charitable projects all across the world. In an ever-changing market for currencies, it's the smart move to consider digital currencies and especially Hope Gold Coin, a coin that's supported by the gold standard. To learn more and to obtain these coins, please visit hopegoldcoin.org. This episode of Rules of Success is also brought to you in part by Gnarly Nutrition. It could be argued that diet and supplementation are actually more important to a fit, healthy body than actual exercise. That's where Gnarly Nutrition steps in. With products that include BCAAs, whey protein, pre-workout powders, and meal replacements, Gnarly is committed to providing clean sports nutrition, period. You can be confident that Gnarly Nutrition products are blended with only superior, organic, non-GMO ingredients. With Gnarly, it's natural, healthy, and delicious. Go check out GoGnarly.com to get your stash. Everyone connects to a story. And so what becomes ever more important is your personal story. I would say the number one thing for, for you or anybody to, to get uh, some traction would be the personal story and, and having them uh, become friends, followers, and uh, students, and, and just part of your uh, tribe, so to speak. And we are back with another one. Mitch Miller with Opposed Media is the voice you just heard. If that voice sounds familiar, it's because it should. That guy was actually the uh, featured guest on episode 15, back when this was still talking to myself. And uh, he dropped some killer knowledge about copywriting. And even in the second segment of that uh, episode, he gave this formula to basically write copy that nobody could turn down. Well, being that uh, Mitch has been such an influence in the success of this podcast, we felt it fitting to bring him back. He was uh, a day away from traveling to Thailand. Actually, when this uh, episode is going out, he's probably still overseas. And he decided to give us some time to talk further about some of the psychology associated with audience building, building a tribe, having there be something that hooks people and understanding the shortest distance to success. As the founder of Opposed Media, this is what he does all day long. And to be honest with you, he's freaking super expensive to get him to to give the type of knowledge that he gives on this stuff you're going to be paying thousands of bucks for it to happen in this first segment we talk about a couple things and he actually helps me personally in working through some of the different uh, opportunities that have come up as i've decided to have apply the science be a program that helps people as a companion to the book that i give away science of getting rich at the website it's pretty fascinating to kind of hear his story the second segment, he goes into some really deep psychological stuff when it comes to men and, and how we are able to overcome challenges and, and confidence and, and all that. But this first segment has some gems in it you don't want to miss. So, like I said, Mitch Miller with Opposed Media is here on this show. It's a good one. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Rules of Success. We discuss the topics to help you see things in a different way. We talk balance in body, being, business, and relationships. A podcast about success? Yeah, that's us. Here's your host, Bryce Prescott. All right, everybody, we are back. This episode is with one of the legends from my episode catalog, Mitch Miller, copyright extraordinaire, super stud business owner of Opposed Media. What's going on, Mitch? How you been? Hey, hey, making me blush, man. Um, Good. I'm great. Everything's great. <laughs> you're good. You're great. Everything's <laughs> great. That's awesome, man. Well, just to give the listeners of the show a bit of a recap, in case there's like the three of you out there that haven't listened to Mitch's first uh, episode, can you believe this, dude? This is episode 15. You were on episode 15 of the show. It was actually called Talking to Myself back then. Mm. Uh, this episode's 76. What? Yeah. So uh, you're part of the foundation, brother. Wow, you're crushing it. You That's guys, incredible. Well, I got to say, man, you helped lay that foundation for me to be able to crush because I've gotten so much good feedback about your first episode. I mean, your story, to recap a little bit, rock and roll dude, had a heart attack in your early 20s, just living in your car. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, all sorts of crazy obstacles that you had to overcome. And now fast forward here to 2015 and you're crushing the game with what you're doing. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, Mitch and I met through a, a, a mutual friend, and it's it's led to uh, some some great other you know collaborations that are in effect offline. But 
basically kind of watching the you continue to rise with what you had already started years ago with opposed media. It's it's pretty exciting, man. Yeah, thank you. It's it's uh it's it's rising uh, pretty quick, and I think uh, in, in a nutshell, because I over I always overanalyze everything. I think uh, Dan Kennedy calls it the phenomenon. It's 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 when you you start uh, accelerating. Uh, and getting more success in the last, say, twelve months than you would in the in the previous twelve years combined, and it's kind of like this, this, uh, this like weird anomaly that you can actually observe, where it's almost like a flat line, and it's like that J curve where it just starts to shoot up, and sure. and no one's immune from it, and so it's interesting to to kind of be on this on the start of that and and see it happening. Yeah, Malcolm Gladwell calls that the tipping point. I think where mm-hmm. you just you just start springing straight up. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's good for you guys, man. That's really really cool. I I. Uh, I, I like what you guys are about. You know, you and your and your boys there is Max, your your partner, right? What's his last name? Mac uh, uh Macaulay Ryan. So he has a Macaulay. first name for oh, okay. a, for a last name. So he's Mr. Two First Names. But yeah, he's a genius. He's twenty one years old and and he can keep up with me like no other. And he's he's a he's a genius. So he, he runs half the business. I run half the business. Um our our strengths and our weaknesses complement each other. We got two boys. We got we got Sabian and we got Adam on the team uh, in the office in Canada and basically Mac and I run around the travel the world now uh doing doing workshops now actually we're gonna do we're going to thailand tomorrow morning wow and we're, we're gonna do a workshop uh they were gonna do a workshop in uh singapore and in sydney and then in vancouver before christmas uh, and then i mean who knows after that but <laughs> traveling wilburys man that's freaking awesome mm-hmm. very cool well let me let me let me give uh, a little bit of backstory as uh, some social proofing for you you know, after that, uh, after you and I had our interview months and months ago, um, I, I, maybe I'll be audacious in saying this, but I, I feel like uh, you and I came, you know, closer. We were, developed a friendship there, and so we would talk about stuff that didn't have anything to do with business sometimes. And yeah, and uh, the the rise of kind of rules of success and and what I've been doing, I I will be the first to admit that it's been in part because of your influence with knowing how to word certain things and. Truthfully, I've had to relearn that. I always had somewhat of an arrogance about thinking that I was this great writer, and mm-hmm. then nothing would fucking stick. And so, um, <laughs> bringing in some of the principles that I've learned with you, and, and you've you know offered to be a sounding board for me more times than I I'd probably deserve, and it's just been really really helpful to to be able to create something and, and to go to you and to say, can you take a look at this? I, I think I'm close based off the principles that you're teaching, and and then to have you be like, yeah, this is awesome. This part sucks ass, like. You know, change this and, and go to town, and it's been super helpful. So thank you for that. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I mean, you're a great dude, and you have everything it takes, which is really great because it's it's almost impossible to to teach somebody who um, is is say arrogant, but then doesn't actually have. Uh, any of any uh, natural kind of skill and kind of like some gut level instincts on some of this stuff. And so that's kind of uh, maybe a harsh reality. Uh, it's a lot harder for them to learn and usually they never do, but you have the instincts right. in you and, and it's just usually, it's usually just an, uh, actually it's just an order issue. Usually like say, Oh, if you pass me a piece of writing or if somebody passes me a piece of writing, say, look at this, is this writing um, irresistible? Is this going to influence somebody to do what I want them to do? Usually it says all the right things. That's usually not the issue for people. It's usually just the structure of what you should say before other things. Sure. I've, I've, uh, I've seen that firsthand even in my own copy, you know, building landing pages for my Apply the Science program and changing stuff up on my website. And, and even just the structure of this podcast and how to go about kind of the, the unseen part of it. Like you're exactly yeah. right in that most people, I would say, especially entrepreneurs, they, they can figure out the, the nuts and bolts of what needs to be said. Just mm-hmm. there's so much power in how it's said, when it's said, and with what authority it's said that makes a humongous difference. And you guys sure live that. Thanks, man. So, so tell me then, what, uh, back then, um, you weren't traveling near as much. You were pretty much based out of your, your office there. And it's in Edmonton, right? In Canada? Yeah, yeah. Western Canada. There. It's about 12 hours east of Vancouver, which is on the coast of, west coast of Canada. And, and so, I mean, everyone knows, I mean, if you're in America, you drive 12 hours, you're almost in two, three states sure. in, in Europe, you're, you're, you know, you're across Europe, you looped it over th- three times already. <laughs> and, and so for, for really we're in the middle of nowhere, but yeah, so we're doing some traveling, a lot of personal traveling. Um, I, every single month I'd go somewhere. 
Um, but it wasn't a lot of constant travel like it is now. Uh, I'm in Canada right now. We're back in Edmonton in the office here for the last uh, week or whatever. And then we head out tomorrow again to Thailand. But So there's a lot more traveling going on. There's a lot more um, different type of clients that we're working with now. Working with uh, uh, only very successful clients because um, it's 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 truthfully easier and 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 they get wins easier and and we all have wins and we all feel good and then and they're not afraid to uh, spend money on advertising um, even yeah. if they're not completely successful yet they're not afraid to take those risks and then taking those risks are going to give them the data and give us the data that we need to actually make better decisions which will then make them successful so we had one of our last clients it's, it's really cool the, um, they were doing about $178,000 a month online with their business and the business is called My Outdesk uh, they're doing about maybe I think they're doing sixteen million dollars a year offline with the with the sales, uh, you know, kind of like brute force cold calling and, and that whole thing. Sure. But online, they're doing about one hundred and seventy eight k a month, which is nothing to sneeze at whatsoever. Um, but so we did a little uh, a little funnel for them, uh, wrote a sales letter, uh, and I think it took it took one month nothing happened. Second month it went up to four hundred something thousand. Third month was seven hundred something to thousand, and then now they're consistently doing uh, one point five million dollars a month. That's incredible. So, so unpack that for me, though. So, what are the key? Not so much the the, the revenue numbers, but what are the key uh, tenants, the, the the pieces to that puzzle that make it so that they can scale from you know one hundred and eighty a month all the way up to you know over a million? What? So there there had to have been kind of raw foundation in place for mm-hmm. that to work, right? Yeah, so the raw foundation is, uh, first of all, you have something absolutely irresistible that they'll trade their email for. Uh, and, 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 and to an extent, I mean, you have a pixel, a Facebook pixel on there so you can track them and you can build those audiences on Facebook. That's getting a little uh, intense, but basically you have a way, uh, you have something irresistible to give them. In this case, it was a set of checklists so they don't forget something because we're talking about, it's a product for uh, realtors, uh, real estate agents who are busy and how they can get some of their time back. And so these are checklists on how to not forget certain things. If you're going to do an open house, here's a checklist that you need to do and you check these things off so you don't forget anything and you make sure it's the best open house it be. So we had these set of checklists and then people put their email in for them. Uh, very simple stuff. Um, and, and, and really this, this whole thing is it's, it's really simple stuff. I mean, this is, we, we didn't break any new ground here, but what we did do is we wrote a sales letter that was really, really kick-ass and extremely hard hitting and, and emotional and got them to invest in themselves and say, Hey, listen, yes, I'm so busy that I do need this product. Uh, and I do need to change. And so basically, um, what it was is the, the sales letter is just so damn good and convincing, I guess, that people um, wanted to buy it. And and basically how you scale from that is you get someone very, very, very good at scaling traffic and buying traffic. And that's what they do. That's their uh, that's their core, right? My core passion, um, my my skill is writing um Writing, writing things that influence people. And uh, Jason Hornung, who we got, you guys may or may not know him, he's a traffic genius. Um, he, we got him to do the, the traffic for that. So we got him to scale and, and do the ad spend and build, get the numbers, get the people, the qualified people into that funnel uh, in order to see as many of them see that letter as possible. And of all the people who see that letter, because it's, it's hard hitting and convincing and good, then they just purchase. So there really is all there is to it is you make a message that's so irresistible and so hard hitting and so on point. And then you pay somebody or you find somebody who's very, very good at getting, finding those type of people, qualified people and driving them over to that letter. And then basically however much you spend to get people in to look at that letter versus how much sales you get out, the gap in between the spread, that's your, that's your profit. And you want to widen that out as much as possible um, by making the letter better by, um, you know, millions of things, making the letter better by uh, spending uh, less on the traffic and, and whatnot. I really appreciate you kind of outlining that because here's, here's a common problem that I see with a lot of people that are trying, I'll, I'll use the word trying, trying to get <laughs> successful in that internet marketing space and to utilize that as an avenue. In your first uh, interview that we did, Mitch, I don't know if you'll remember this or not, but we talked about how basically you just have to have something to sell. There's all these different mediums and they come and go with popularity based on the market. But basically there's some key principles that if you have something that is going to work for a, a specific group, there's mechanisms to get that in front of them and to make it easy for it to buy. So when, when, when I'm listening to what you're talking about, it seems really it's, I love the simplicity of it because basically it's, it's something 
that anybody can formulate at that level. Anybody that has some sort of product, it could be an online or an offline product, it doesn't matter. But once you have that, then you figure out who you're, you know, through these resources and experts and, and a community, if you will, how to approach that market, how to get the people that, you know, to, to know who your market is and then to be able to get in front of them and then make an easy form to buy. I get, when, when I was trying to do this, and I'm still even nowhere close to being a master of this by any means, but I feel like I've gotten a couple of, of notches up the ladder on understanding this, that yeah. there's, there's a necessity to just kind of be willing to throw shit at the wall at the beginning because you, you can't know <laughs> until <laughs> you've kind of, it, it's, it's that old thing. You can't know until you don't know. Like until I, I know what's not working because they don't like it, I can't tweak a message. So there's, a, there's this beginning part of the whole process that just is really uncomfortable. And I think that people don't, they don't, they're not willing to get out of that in a way that could allow them to get to the point where you can really blast their results out of the stratosphere. Yep. And that's okay. Right. I mean, that's okay. There's, there's a difference. Uh, and it's okay. And, and what's, what's interesting is, okay, well, so you can, you can blast traffic and you can try things and it doesn't work and, and you can change your approach and you can learn things. You can take that data and do that. That's one, that's one option. But another option is to just do the, do the research right in the first place and actually give yourself um, you know, a 90% chance of succeeding. And for example, if you're, if you're going into a market that you're not quite sure of, like, let's say you're going to sell a weight loss product or, or whatever you're going to sell, it doesn't matter. Um, you can go into the forums, you can go into the groups, you can go into um, the minds of those people and you can pull out what are they saying to themselves in their head? What are their beliefs? What are they saying to each other? What are they, what's their common enemy? What are their daily frustrations that they're looking at? What pain are they feeling? What things are they hoping for? How do they speak to each other? What's the language they speak to each other in? Just in groups and forums online, let alone taking a product and going uh, and 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 now interviewing people who are in your market, like literally interviewing, uh, going door to door, telemarketing, uh, meeting people at support groups or meetings or wherever you go or, or coffee shops that support that have that type of person, um, and actually trying to pitch pitch your product that you want to pitch online in person first with a real human and say why didn't this work? Figure it out. Find out everything that you can about the person that you're going to sell to and you can figure that out uh, without even spending a dime online because you can do you can if you if you're smart enough that issue it doesn't take smarts i mean if you're diligent enough then you just put in the work and you go through the, like for example weight loss you go through the forums you go through the groups you go through the support groups and you you will see how they talk to each other and you just write down their beliefs write down the phrases that they say and you'll see patterns in, in, emerge and you will be able to know exactly what it's like to be in the head of one of those you go to um go to a Jenny Craig thing you know in in your own city in, interview interview uh overweight people for uh for for some reason and have and if there's somebody in your if there's people in your family overweight interview them i mean it's not that difficult to to kind of set yourself up for almost having a home run the first time instead of just maybe just blindly doing, oh, just change this headline or maybe just sell this product and maybe make a little writing here. It's like, no, no, take that time and really feel what it's actually like to be in this person's head because until you do that, you have no idea where they're at. And then they're, then you have no idea what to write to them. It's all just guessing. And that that's just ridiculous in my head. Right. Well, I, I appreciate that. What, what I was saying, it wasn't, you know, just to kind of blindly go into this space and you know throw darts what i was saying i know is i you, know and I, I know that people would probably take it that way that's what i felt oh I, I, know, I know you weren't saying that at all yeah my 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 point was that just ship something you know like seth godin says just mm. start but with what you've said like that's you're so spot on that there's ways i i i hadn't actually considered that mitch that to try selling my wares in person to somebody and to see what that da- dynamic looks like because mm-hmm. That's one of the things when I look at my own experience, and a lot of the times when I talk to guys like you in this space, and when I say guys like you, I mean experts in fields that directly could affect the success I have of my podcast and my product. Okay, so, right. so you as a copywriter, you could directly affect my business by associating your talents with what I'm doing mm-hmm. and making it better. Um, so just to define that, where, where I was going was that um, when... When you're selling something in person, it requires kind of a different level of understanding of your actual product, and you can you can feed off of those concerns almost immediately in a way to where oh I, yeah I just forgot to say that part of it here's that information it really kind of helps to hone a message I love that idea yeah because you can see where 
the, the skepticism break comes in. You can see how they're reacting in real time. You can't do that online, but by doing it in person first, you, you can guess how they're going to do it online, and then you can address those things in writing that you can't uh, do when you're in front of a person. Sure. So here's, here's something that's kind of a unique example for, for myself personally. So you put anybody in front of me, and I can get them hot in love on board with the science of getting rich presented by Rules of Success, my, my uh, uh-huh. free giveaway at my website. Yep. And even have them incredibly stoked on the idea of my companion program, Apply the Science. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to get that kind of excitement yet because it's so new, but I, I'm obviously building. We've got paid applicants already that are in the program, but mm-hmm. I'm looking to scale. I'm looking to get it to where it's, I've gotten taken 10 on the first one. I want to get that filled up. Mm-hmm. So how do we do that then? How do we translate, you know, for example, my enthusiasm and understanding completely of that whole process into something that's more engaging online because online you're in front of somebody they can roll your eyes you can feed off that you can you can know what you can feed off immediately what the energy is on online they just click away you know they just yep. leave. you don't know you don't know what's going on that's right so how do we so do that everyone connects to a story and so what becomes ever more important is your personal story because your your listeners, your friends, people who don't even know you yet, um, people who are thinking of knowing you, people who may want to know you, people who are referred to you, um, everybody loves a good story, and everybody loves an emotional story. It may be a heroic story, maybe a story of how things weren't so good for you. Maybe they were terrible. Maybe you've been through things a lot of other people weren't uh, weren't haven't gone through. And 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 because some of the principles in this in the book that actually has helped you you know, become the amazing person that you are, um, people would do not understand the gravity of the, of that book. And they do not understand the gravity of the rules of success yet, because first of all, we're inundated with so much information. Everyone's a guru. Everyone's got something to say about success. There's a trillion books. And so it's like, kind of like a a form of banner blindness. It's like a blindness. It's like, well, there's, there's a million things. It's like, I'm already behind 18 books, you know, that I know I should read. I'm already guilty about that. So you're just adding another one here. So, but, so what you, you got to do and what everyone needs to do is they need to think in terms of personal connections and a personal story. So if you can tell your personal story in a way that people can connect to and they're like, man, this guy has been through a lot. This guy has been through uh, very similar things as me or maybe even uh, coming from a more extreme place than I have. Uh, that allows me to connect to him. Uh, I like him. And I, and I would do business with him and, and I, and I believe in him and there, and, and, and he provides hope for me, you know, and, and this and that, and then people will like, you know, you you sell yourself and people will buy the things that you, um, that you, you are selling. So I, I would say the number one thing for, for you or anybody to, 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 to get, uh, some traction on that and, and would be, especially online would be the personal story and and having them uh, become friends, followers, and uh, students, and and just part of your uh, tribe, so to speak. It's funny that you say that because one of the easiest closes that I had was with a guy that uh, knew me from my past and watched my historic rise in real estate. Saw me living in my mu- my massive house and was was you know saw the saw that and then kind of saw the. <laughs> rounding the corner and having right. everything fall apart. And so the, he understood the story in a way that, which was which was more personal. So as, as I listen to what you're saying, like you're spot on. So I, I've got to figure out in my copy how to make that connection easier for people that don't know me. Correct. And that's what a sales letter usually is. <laughs> it's, 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 a story, it's a story that then, yeah. um, that then transitions into a product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like... Yeah, no shit, Bryce. That's exactly what I fucking said. Way to go. You listened. Good for you. Uh, I love it. All right. So, so uh, let's just get a little bit more um, in, in depth about your company and your services. In the second segment, you, uh, you already warned me. You're going to drop some freaking knowledge that's going to blow people's minds. So I'm looking forward to that. But, but I want to set, let's talk about your story a little bit. Since this is a follow-up interview, people listening to this might not have heard about exactly who Mitch Miller is and Opposed Media, give us, uh, give us a clip into that. You, you already talked about some of the guys that are there in your office. What is Opposed Media and what is your objective? Okay. So because I've talked about my story so many times, um, it's almost, I almost roll my own eyes, like beating it to death. Like, oh, the homeless thing. Oh, you know, I had a heart attack, all that stuff. Yes, those things happened. Yes, they were, they were, they were crappy, all that stuff. Now, Opposed Media come, came about because uh, I've, I've always been 
always been opposed to uh, mainstream thinking. It, it bores me. It scares me. Um, the mainstream, uh, and I mean, like you know, the average comfortable um, life that that always freaked me out. And I always saw it as as some sort of you know group thinking and 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 very limited thinking. And so because of that, um, opposed media means to me is um, the amount the amount that you can defy current industry norms is is to the extent that you'll be uh, successful in your in your industry or at least be a a trendsetter and someone who makes a big impact and is doing new and exciting things because industry norms are there um, and they're and and basically all businesses who follow most industry norms they're just kind of the way things have always done and if you just do the things the way they're usually done you're usually just going to get mediocre results because the the truth is most businesses are mediocre and and most people are mediocre and and that's just the way it is and that's just yeah. because that's the way it is and so these industry norms these social norms a lot of the 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 way things should be done is is actually uh holding people back and it's very limiting and so opposed media simply means uh we defy industry norms we do we 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 are the outliers we are the risk takers we're the trendsetters we're going against the grain not just to be against the grain right it's not punk rock just to be a punk rock it's going against the grain because those are the things that actually work right the the 5% of people who are actually successful are obviously going against the grain because the grain is 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 85% uh, or is the 95% that aren't doing really anything or they're doing things the same way as everybody else, which is why they have the mediocreness. And so we focus on what are the, what's the, what are the top people in the world do? And, and, and basically what are the things that are underground really working and being different than others and sticking out? Um, and then, you know, creating, uh, new worlds from there, I guess you could say. Excellent. So how does so how do you turn that into a a, a payment a, a revenue model for yourself? You guys are kicking ass doing what exactly? <laughs> okay, well, so we have multiple revenue streams now, and so the the first revenue stream is consulting. So we do consulting. We will actually uh, we do a lot of teaching of principles of marketing a business, advertising, and copywriting, sales. It's all the same shit. So you know you can it, everything ties into everything else, and so it's all kind of one thing that we teach. We teach all this stuff. And uh, from time to time, if the client is right, we'll take on projects and actually do the work with them or completely for them. Um, and that that's at a, a very very high uh, very high fees and back end royalties. Um, the, the cool thing is, is you can't charge high enough for something like that because you know, regardless, even if our fee is a hundred thousand dollars plus royalties, you're going to make millions and millions and millions of dollars off of it. So it's really didn't cost you anything at all. It's just, uh, it's, it's an incredible investment that you wouldn't find in any other asset class like real estate or, or stocks or anything. We're talking about, you know, a business, um, and the, the profits are, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit for that kind of stuff. So basically we have a consulting model. People can become clients. And we have a coaching model where we have uh, different classes. So I have uh, I have three camps. We have a, co- a copy camp, which teaches people how to write sales letters and write better copy. By the end of the actual camp, you'll actually have a finished sales letter ready to go out that has my stamp and seal approval on it. So that's really cool. It's an eight-week coaching program. We have another eight-week coaching program called Client Camp, which will be starting up in the new year again. And it's all about how uh, experts, consultants, coaches, whatnot, uh, service providers um, can bring in more clients. It's all about you know strategies after strategy after strategy after tactic after mindset after attitude after every little cool little um, trick in the book in order to get new clients. Uh, so there's that camp. We also have a sales camp that teaches you because sales is the most important skill um, that that someone can learn in business. Uh, it's like the meta skill that everything's wrapped around it. Uh, sure. We, we teach we teach sales as well, so we have a sales camp with uh, with the, with uh, my two partners in that, which uh, Rohan and Tim, and we teach uh, teach people sales. So there's that as well. We have the live workshops that we're doing. Like I said, I think uh, for f- the uh, dates that I can remember off the top of my head, Singapore is November 21st, um, and what is uh, I think December fourth and fifth is Sydney, Australia, and then uh, December 21st in Vancouver. So we'll be uh, teaching marketing, teaching all sorts of, um, a lot of the psychology of marketing. So if you get that right, 
again, everything falls into place. So we're doing that. We have some uh, some partnership deals with some other, uh, but sometimes uh, people have a, an amazing product, but they're not sure how to market it, but they're really good at uh, developing the product. Yeah. So we'll go, we'll go partnership uh, 50-50 on businesses like that uh, as well. Really? And so, yeah, absolutely. It's got to be the right product, but if we if we see we can market it, we will go in. Uh, we'll go in hard and and uh, and blow it up with them. And so there's a few of those that uh, that we're involved with right now. And so there's many things. And and I want to write another book because I have a few books on Amazon.com. I want to write. I want to write another book. I really do. And I want to do get some more info, uh, some actual information products out there in the market. Some like, lower dollar stuff because you know our fees are pretty pretty expensive. I'd like to make a lot of what we do a little more accessible to people too. So those are just some of the things we're up to now. That's awesome. So, so what I'm hearing is I, as I listen to what you're saying is basically if there's uh, even in spite of, a, you know, a potential high price point, you're looking to talk with people that have a good product that you could help and that there's options out there to, to make it work. Is that fair? Yeah. Our, yeah and our time is extremely limited. So sure. it would have to be the right thing. I mean, I, we, we are, we are not, we're not hurting for work in, in any sense. I mean, I, we, we can't take on, any client in any capacity probably for the next six months unless a spot were to just randomly open up because you never know what happens uh, with clients and such. Yeah. Um, but, but as it sits, I mean, we, we're just, we're, in a, we're, we're lucky that we're in a position right now um, mostly because of what we stand for and what we decide that we're going to accept in our lives and what we're not going to accept in our lives that we do, we only want authentic people who are uh, who are on their way to being successful they have something good something that we can help blow up with them and because of that it's uh we've been uh however you want to say it blessed lucked um given um the opportunity to work with some amazing people and and uh and not have to worry about the money side of things that's excellent to uh to have a last question here before we finish up this first segment Mm-hmm. One of the things that I found to be a truth amongst all high level um, producers and earners, especially in the spaces that you are, is that in order to stand in front of somebody and to be a mentor, you've got to have had your own experience being mentored and, and learning from the best in the business. Mm-hmm. So in that camp and in your, your, with the successes that you're experiencing now, what do you do to still be in that space where you're humble enough to know that you're, you're always learning? I mean, you are obviously the expert as it stands. But there's obviously even more for you to learn. So who are your mentors, the coaches that you, you spend time with that have helped you to keep your game to be as best as it can be? Um, well, the, the, first, the first mentors is just looking around at life. Everything I see, I, I'll analyze and I'll see how that fits in everything else that can, that can keep me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty damn humble. Actually, everybody on our team is incredibly humble. And, uh, and I think we've lucked out there for whatever reason. Um, but mentors, I mean, I have a mastermind with three other people. And uh, and we speak once a week. We keep each other on track. Um, I, I'm not really a fan of of getting on uh, official masterminds, like say getting on say Ryan Levesque or Dan Kennedy or any of these masterminds. I'm not interested in being one of those guys who 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 is in all of these things because. Uh, and I'll be completely honest: is from a positioning standpoint, you know, I don't want to be I don't want to be second tier. I want to be top tier. And if I want to be top tier, then I don't want to be the students of all the people that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't quite make sense to me. So sure, I, I, have yeah. to find, I have to find other ways. And so I have, we have private masterminds with, uh, with some of my friends who are, some of them are very successful and some of them are on their way as well. And so I have private masterminds with, with the people around me. Um, Macaulay and I, of course, um, you know, we mastermind between each other, our brains fire in, in, in crazy ways. And so we learn off each other constantly because we always have a slightly different takes on things, even though they're pretty much the same. Uh, we have, um, we have a, uh, my mentors are, are old school kind of asshole guys, you know, surprise, surprise, but like (laughs) (laughs) Gary Halbert, Dan Kennedy, I don't deviate too much. Like I don't listen to a lot of the new guys because to be honest, I mean, and, and here's where the humbleness might go away for a little bit is, as I feel that there's just some, there's something missing. They're, they're missing some, some foundation enough knowledge. They're, they're just missing some depth and they're missing some, they're just missing some little, some something little, and I can't figure out what it is. Um, but basically, um, my mentors now I, I would, and literally you can do this exercise. You can, you can think of a, of a problem. If you know your mentor is good enough, like if, like I've studied everything that Danny Kennedy's ever put out for, uh, oh, 15 years now or whatever. And so, I mean, everything he's ever said on every program that I've listened to a billion times, including in my sleep uh, for years, is etched into my brain. So literally, if I have a question 
or something I'm pondering, I can ask Dan Kennedy, right? I can go into my brain and ask him, what, what the hell would, what, what, what do you say? And then you know how he would answer because I've studied the, you know, you know what he would say. So you can, so you could, even though he's not directly answering you, he kind of is because you know his, his philosophies and his theories so well that you can answer your own questions. That's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I do that all the time and it, and it may sound like kind of crazy, but, uh, but if you know your stuff enough or if you know his stuff enough, or if you know any of, of your, of your mentors belief patterns and their thoughts enough, then you can get the answers to those questions by either, you know, asking it to yourself, like some crazy schizophrenic, or you can go back into their material and, and try to source out, uh, the answer to your own question. This second segment is a killer one because we go into the psychology of men specifically. So just to clear it, and Mitch even says this himself, that if you're a woman and you're listening to this, it doesn't mean you get to tune out. It means you get to listen harder because you're going to have an insight into how dudes work when it comes to this. So if you have as a part of any of your sales uh, efforts, men as a part of it, this is going to be something that illuminates it. It's a fascinating idea. I don't want to give any spoilers to it, but I think he's kind of spot on. It's very primitive. It's very, uh, he uses the the word physiology to talk about how he was able to come up with this. There's certain things that just as a part of the DNA of being a dude. So uh, get ready to have your mind blown. Anyway, before we hit into that though, I got to pay some bills. So here's a few words about our sponsors. I wanted to give a big thank you to the sponsors of this show, Hope Gold Coin and Gnarly Nutrition. With Hope Gold Coin, I wanted to highlight a few things. Hope Gold Coin is actually changing the way that charities are able to receive money throughout the world. And the proceeds that come from the sale of that coin are actually used to fund charitable projects. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen, and it's really helping people all over the world. Not just in areas without traditional banking, but even here in the United States. Go check out hopegoldcoin.org to learn more. Now, as far as gnarly nutrition is concerned, these guys are the bee's knees, man. I started using their supplements in my own training, and I was noticing that as soon as I did after that, my results started to peak in a way that they hadn't before. What you put in your body, both pre and post-workout, is huge when it comes to the results you're gonna get. And Gnarly Nutrition provides BCAAs, whey protein, pre-workout powders, meal replacements, all with non-GMO, organic ingredients. These guys are great. So, if you'd like to get your own stash, head to gonarly.com. And lastly, I wanted to share something that's very important to me and I think would be very important to you. I never tire sharing about my book, The Science of Getting Rich, presented by Rules of Success. In addition to that, you may have heard me talk about the companion program that we now offer that's called Apply the Science. Before I get into that, I have a few questions for you. Do you ever feel like you just don't have enough money? Or would you like to have better connection with your spouse or your loved ones? Or better yet, have a better, more forgiving relationship with yourself? How about your body? Do you want a stronger, more fit body? The truth is, if you felt any of those emotions and you want things to be different, I'm here to tell you that they can be different. An answer exists that makes scarcity around money go away, that makes connection with your loved ones easier, and helps your physical body be a tool for your success instead of a liability. The science of getting rich just doesn't focus on money, but as the author states, Man's right to life means his right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things which may be necessary to his fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfoldment, or, in other words, his right to be rich. Go to applythescience.com. Check out my new program to help passionate men and women apply the science of getting rich, a book written by Wallace D. Waddles over a century ago that explains how to use the law of attraction to attract more wealth into your life. So if you're ready to take your life to the next level with a group of like-minded individuals, I'm only taking 10 applicants for my new program, Apply the Science. Go to applythescience.com and get with us now. Second segment, my people. You know, Mitch, you said something at the end of that first segment that had me chuckling there a little bit during the break. So it's like a what would Jesus do type of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've, you've got your, you've, you've, you've studied and you know enough the personalities and uh, principles that these guys teach that you can kind of bounce off. That is, 
That is one of the the biggest takeaways I think I've I've ever had on this podcast, Mitch, because you're you're spot on about that. There's sometimes we're just unwilling to be truthful with ourselves about certain things when it comes to decisions we need to make and when we put the decision or the idea or the needed course of action within the framework of what would my mentor do based off of my understanding of them and their principles. It's a it's a detached way to get an answer that might be one that you don't want to admit you need, but yet it's in your face. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know how I came about it. I don't know where I could have heard it from somewhere. You know, having read like thousand, like I don't know how many books. I, I keep saying like seven hundred thousand. Who knows? Having read an a godly amount of books, audio programs, seminars, derp de der, all the experience, all of that inside my head somewhere. I don't know where that came from. I don't know if I did it on my own or came from somewhere, but it's been very, very, very helpful. Nice. So in this uh, this segment, basically, I've I've reserved this time because I am. Curious as I'll get out on what revolutionary stuff you're going to share with us now. So, I guess uh, g- give me a little bit of a lead in before you get into the meat and potatoes of what you want to talk about. What specifically has you excited that uh, that is basically the reason for this episode? I'd I'd love to get your thoughts on it too. Once I once I go off on my rant here, sure. Um, and, and and so I've been playing around with the idea of what's holding us back from doing the things that we need to do. Because we all know action is everything. Sure. And so if we're not taking action, then there's something blocking it and there's something, there's something up. And see, when what I'm all about is getting to the core reasons of things, getting to the core understanding. Because if you chip away at things that aren't the core thing, then you're just wasting time. Because if you chipped away at the core thing, then everything else underneath it falls into line. So I've always been about like when I'm when I've been Hold on, say that say that part again. You chip away at the core thing. Say say that part again. Okay. So it, you can well here's an example. You can you can take you can take the time trying to chip away and saw at the trunk of a tree. Right? And and it'll sure. fall over and all the branches fall with it. Sure. But most people are doing the equivalent of chopping the branches off or chipping away at all the branches. When in reality, let's say, let's say all your fears and all of that, or the things that you think are holding you back, the things that you want to work on to, to get where you want to go are actually like the little branches. And so most people are chipping away at the branches and, 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 and cutting the leaves off instead of actually chipping away at the trunk so that the tree falls down and no, there's no more fear or whatever you want to call it. Sure. So there are core there are core things. So, so with me, whenever I've wanted to, to um, find out for copywriting, for example, I want to find out who the very best in the world is and model that. That's been like one of my core tenets of everything that I do is find out who the hell is the best at this and then model that. Because once you start from there and you start from the top down, your foundation of knowledge is so, it's so solid. It's got such a solid base to it that you can then start to learn from people who learn from them. And even if they have new ideas, at least your, your foundation is proper. So you don't get led astray by people who don't know what they're talking about, but sound slick. Sure. And, and things like that. So I've always been get find out who the best is, and then work your way down the knowledge tree, and 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 get to, and then you can you know, and then you can because most people do the equivalent of like Google searching copywriting, and then they go into a, a fucking sea of bullshit, and a sea of just like half truths and 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 plain wrong information, some right information, and they wonder why they're in this game for three, two, five, ten years, and everything's so goddamn confusing. And one guru will say something that makes sense, and then the, another guru will say something that's contradicting and makes sense. Uh, but makes sense as well, and then you're thoroughly confused. This happens all the time. I see it all the time. So it's it's like why why are why are you confused? Well, you're confused because you don't have the foundation yet in order to base those decisions off of. So everything sounds good. Whereas if you've got the actual foundation in the first place, then you could actually find find that if 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 they're trustworthy gurus, and see so you need to have the foundation to even know who to trust as a guru, not just someone who says he's a goddamn guru. So once you, once, then you may find that if there are two gurus who are actually, you know, actual people worth listening to, I hate the goddamn word guru, but two actual experts who know what they're talking about may have contradictory, uh, on the surface, contradictory, uh, views on some, on the same, on the same topic may in, may, if you have the actual foundation, see that they're actually very complimentary and in fact, the exact same thing, but maybe just a slightly different angle of going about it. Okay. Sure. I, I get that. So, mm-hmm. So. This is why I'm excited today is I, I think I've found, and this is audacious, <laughs> I think I've found the core of what 
makes men uh, buy everything, and I think the core of what will ho- what ho- is holding men back from from uh, taking action. And and this is interesting because I'm, I'm trying to go. I, I just came to this conclusion this morning. It just kind of smashed into my head. So you know, this could be completely crazy, but I think this is going to be a, a fun journey. And this is uh, and this is only for 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 men here. So like, ladies, this is amazing for you to listen to because of the psycho- psychological lesson you're going to get out of it, as far as um, how. Un- Understanding how people work and understanding how to sell to people and marketing yourself and marketing to men and everything is, is equally applies to you in 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 the idea of understanding more about this game of marketing to people. Uh, but for men, this is going to be huge for you to understand yourself and how to sell other men and understanding how how things work. So um, I, I'm pumped about this. I, I, I basically it was percolating in my brain for the last couple of months. Just the idea of it, just kind of some nagging like some nagging thought and then just kind of dumped into my brain. So this is going to be completely raw. It's going to be, um, maybe, um, maybe not, maybe kind of gritty and not as, uh, as, as thought through as it, as it, as it, as it could be, uh, as it will be in the coming years. But I think this is going to, uh, hopefully blow uh, your mind. Well, what a blessing that we're recording this and that uh, we can look <laughs> back on it after, uh, this, uh, baby's born. <laughs> yeah, and it may find that I'm completely full of shit, but uh, I guess we'll see. So. Or, or or a visionary, <laughs> who knows? Either one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <sighs> the biggest reason that we don't go for and, and thus achieve our dreams, I would say, is fear. That's no surprise. We all know this. So if we didn't feel fear or if it wasn't so intense, we would actually act more because action is everything. Now, fear blocks action and causes inaction which or procrastination. You know, nothing earth shattering here yet. Sure. However, if we were more confident, we would take more action because we feel less fear, or at least we'd uh, still attempt it because we have enough confidence and self esteem to be able to handle the fail. So we may see fearful things as simply uh, learning experiences. We reframe things better. We have the more strength to handle this. So the confidence and self esteem can give you resilience and mental strength itself. So here's where this gets interesting, I would say. Think of the common fears that hold us back uh, and the things that you're told hold you back. Failure, fear of failure, fear of embarrassment, fear of the unknown, yeah. rejection, you know, n- and fear of the unknown, right? Nearly everything that scares you about the unknown, nearly the, every, everything that actually scares you about the unknown actually is unknown, like, you know, predicting individual human behavior. That's pretty much what we, we're scared about the most, but that's actually the one thing that is only unknown. <laughs> right, um, yeah. But there's, you know, there's fear of, you know, disapproval, rejection, embarrassment, all these things. So, Here's where I'd like to, to begin breaking new ground. I don't know if anyone's ever talked about this before. I'd like to suggest that most fears, all of them except one, are just surface fears. So like we just kind of talked about with the tree trunk and the branches. So in the same way in sales, if a certain objection may just be a surface objection, if you said to me, you know, Mitch, this just, co- uh, I don't know, man, I just can't afford it right now. This costs too much. And I said, oh, hey, cool. Listen, if I could fix that for you, if we could find a way to put it in your budget so that you could afford this, would you feel comfortable moving ahead with this purchase today? And you said, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, but man, my wife would kill me. So and what you're saying is that the actual objection of the money and not being able to afford it is actually not a real objection. That was just a surface objection. That's not the core objection. Okay. So by calling it out and looking to see if it's a core objection, you actually find out that that's not the real one. So in the exact same way here, if you can look at the fear of failure, for example, and clearly see that it's really actually boils down. That's just that's not a real uh, that's not a real fear. It's actually just boils down to the fear of rejection by people. So you know the fear of embarrassment, disapproval, unknown. It all boils down to the fear of rejection. So all the books and all the people who talk about these fears and how to get over them are doing the equivalent of focusing on the money thing, on the money objection or whatever. When it's really the approval or rejection. From you know, let's let's say the money thing for sales. It's actually just the approval or rejection from their significant other in purchasing. It's not the money. So everyone, all these gurus and everyone talking about you know, get over your fear of failure, and, and they're talking about something. They're dancing. They're chipping away at the. They're pulling leaves off the off the tree, but they're not chipping at the at the trunk. So it's just going to take forever, and it's it's kind of not true. So let's dive into rejection. Back in the caveman days, and I like to research back to these times because though we have iPhones in cities with 10 million people in them now, the truth is that you know, for a crazy amount of time, as we evolved, we typically were grouped into 100 to 300 person tribes. Sure. Now, what happens if you fuck up and you're rejected from your tribe 100,000 years ago? Well, your skull is either crushed with a rock or you're kicked out in the forest to die alone. 
And as we know, social isolation is the worst punishment for any human or any kind of mammal, right? We literally go crazy and die. So there are very real biological and genetic reasons we're afraid of rejection. So if you think about the purpose of life, um, and, and, and I don't mean, um, I don't mean philo- philosophically, I mean physiologically and biologically, sure. uh, it's only two things, survival and replication. Our personal survival and our species survival survival and replication. So all of our emotions, drives, and feelings are hardwired into us in order to carry out these two goals, survive long enough to make another human so the species can evolve and survive. So here's what I want everyone to stick with me here because this is going to get good. To be a leader, to have confidence, and to make something of yourself in the world, you cannot be controlled by the fear of rejection, right? Your level of success is directly related to how much you don't care what other people think of you. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not sensitive to and aware of how you're making them feel, but that's that's a different topic. Sure. My point is, is that their opinion of you is not more important than your opinion of yourself. So there's a chicken and the egg dilemma that comes because uh, by not needing approval and by not caring uh, if you are rejected by any one person will actually create a vibe and attitude in you that will actually cause less rejection. But like a shark smelling blood, if you're afraid of rejection, you're toast. So it's like self-fulfilling prophecy stuff. So like, So now that I'm set up here, Let's smash this out of the park and come full circle. I'll show you exactly how to level up in your life like you've never seen before. Now I, always, now, I always say, if you want to be great at something, like I just said earlier, you always study from the very best. You learn from the top down so your foundation and base of knowledge is unshakable. Well, it's the same here. The standard advice, if you want to get better at sales, better at selling yourself, your products, your business, whatever, level up in life and, and be a boss, is to, they say, is to learn sales, to get over your fear of rejection, fear of sales. Progressively desensitize, knock on doors, kill that fear of rejection. That, that This is the path. This is the, what everybody gives you. I'm here to tell you that there's another path, um, like a, a meta path. There's, there's, there's an obvious but hidden under your nose strategy that you can use that will take care of your sales fear and every, every other fear you have automatically. Because just like those are all the branches, if you chop the, 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 the root of the tree down, then the whole thing's going down. So this one thing will take care of the rest. And here it is. Since our only two biological goals are to survive and replicate, and replication is our species survival, your sole purpose in life biologically is to mate. Therefore, anything that could happen to uh, threaten or destroy your chances of mating is going to create massive fear. Paradoxically, paradoxically, I guess you say, like having this fear will actually cause you to not do the things that are logically required for you to desensitize yourself to the fear long enough to not feel the fear and thus not be limited by it and allowing you to mate like a champ and reach your dreams. I'll say it one more time. Uh, try to say that more clearly because it's huge. Paradoxically, by having the fear of rejection, you will actually, it'll actually cause you not to do the stuff that you know you should do that is required for you to desensitize yourself from that fear and then allowing you to actually begin to mate like a champ and reach your dreams. So what I'm trying to say is your biology is actually holding you back because it thinks you're too weak to handle the possible social pressure of, of rejection. Like a true alpha male, it wants to keep you a beta male, and so it blocks you from acting in ways that make you step up and become that man. We want to change this, obviously. <laughs> okay, so get this. I know I'm going crazy here. How do we change this? By realizing that at the core of everything that you are as a man, your fear of rejection from females is actually the core of every other fear in your life. So if you can eliminate or reduce to at least a low hum your your fear of being rejected by beautiful women, then every fear from sales to embarrassment to unknown to everything will autocorrect and take care of itself. So like practically, what's the prescription? Approach every female who intimidates you until you no longer care if you're rejected by them. And you can do this uh, until you can do this without fear. So think about it. If you're on stage speaking, you're at a restaurant, you're at a nightclub, you're at a bookstore, uh, you're at the grocery store, and every woman in the place is staring at you, smiling, winking, flirting, fully accepting you and approving you, but all the men are talking shit, whispering, laughing a bit, ignoring you, would that be a bad situation? Well, obviously, realistically, it's not ideal, but on a gut level, you're fine. You feel like a stud. You don't care what the guys think. You know you're attractive and they're just haters and all the women love you, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But what if it's reversed? What if all the dudes thought you were cool? Maybe they're smiling at you, giving you attention, but all the women are snickering, they're laughing and pointing at you. Some walk up and tell you you're a piece of shit. You get that like you look from all the women. How would you feel about yourself? Right? Yeah, for sure. So so I'll tell you what. In the real world, if you have all the women liking you, 
Um, and see, <laughs> this is crazy. The, the way to do this is simply not care what anyone thinks of you and especially what women don't think of you. So it frees you up to be real and authentic. And that means that they will like you because of that. And then the men will follow because it's really easy to get men on your side. It's, it's hard to be very likable to, to women for most men. I'm talking about most men here. And so anyway, it's all about social status. So because we're social creatures, and this is marketing, sales, it's all about social status. Because we're social creatures, you want and you want to sell to men, uh, you know, and, and and you are a man. Understand what I just said. Anything that will increase the chances of a man being less rejected by women will make him more money or more status symbols in order to be more attractive to that woman. You know, and if you want to kick ass in your own life, realize that why you do everything on a biological level um, is this uh, fear of rejection from women. Don't ignore it. Smash it head on. Talk to them till you're not nervous anymore. And of course, at the same time, focus on the higher level conscious stuff that, you know, that makes us unique in the first place and that makes us evolve on a higher level like humans uh, and not just act on our base reptilian desires. Um, but that's that's basically it. That's that's my theory of, uh, of everything when it comes to men and marketing. <laughs> so basically... You, you think that a, a dude can, can overcome his fear of rejection on a, on a subconscious level by putting himself in a position to basically kill it with the ladies? Um, I'm basically saying that um, from a core level, if, if, if a man wants to evolve uh, and become more confident, as confident as he can, or build the self-esteem or the, or the momentum in his life in the fastest most hardcore, uh, direct, uh, most powerful way possible, then you are best to not focus on getting better at sales or this or that or the other thing, but going up to women that intimidate you and, and just introducing yourself, saying hi or whatnot, and progressively desensitizing yourself there until you don't feel that fear anymore. And then that is the core that will drip down into every single other thing in your life. Dude, that is fascinating. It's interesting. I, I think you're onto something, man. Like as I as I as I listen to what you're saying, and I think about the times specific. I, I can only use my own experience as a, as a test here, right? So I think about the times in my life <coughs> when I'm doing the best in those levels, in those areas. Mm-hmm. Yep. I uh, most of the time I I didn't give a shit about you know the hotness of the girl or whatever didn't intimidate me. It was it was now down at a per, it was a personal thing. It's like it was. Yeah. I, I, that that facade of, of physical beauty didn't change. It was, and that's what and that's what you realize because you realize that that's that's the the brilliance of it is once you desensitize yourself to that you realize that they're just people and you realize that it was all in your head in the first place and that you now trust like we said I said earlier you now trust the opinion of yourself more than their opinion of you. You don't need their approval anymore. And you want to go around and desensitize yourself and not need approval from anyone on earth in order to feel good about yourself. But direct, by directly chipping away at the, at the female thing from a biological mating standpoint, by chipping away at that and getting that one handled, then once you don't care what they think, you'll automatically not care about what any other human thinks on earth. Therefore, you're now freed up to make the right decisions and you're not blocked by anything anymore. And you can now take unlimited action in your life. Right. And just to be clear, when you say, you know, you don't care, it's not that you're lacking consideration or you turn into this big asshole. It's that you're, Correct. you're not bound to the opinions of others as something that you take into account now for the decisions you want to make for. Correct. The, the you know who you are. Right. You know who you are, right? If, you, if you're nervous walking up to, uh, to, walking up to a, a stranger, a, a, a beautiful woman, for example, if, or, 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 or a guy or anyone, you're, and you're nervous and you're walking up, um, you're already you're already like putting them on a pedestal. You're already giving them more status than they may deserve or whatnot. And so basically what I mean by not caring what they think is you know who you are and you can stand on your own two feet. You're, you're confident with yourself. You know you have value to bring to the table and you just can go up without the bullshit in your head. You can just go up freely, confidently, and clearly and, and just give value to the conversation, make friends. There's no blocks anymore and there's no fear anymore. So you, you are very in tuned and sensitive to how you make people feel. You're not stupid there. You're not arrogant. You're not cocky. You're not a sociopath. You simply aren't uh, limited by any uh, social fear. I get it. That's freaking brilliant, dude. Like, as, as I think about that, that, that plays in perfectly with even the tenets of this podcast, with the whole balance idea of, you know, you got to keep your health and fitness in check. You've got to be good in your relationships and have there be a level of accountability and authenticity there. You've got to be in touch with yourself creatively and with your being. And then you've got to have sound business principles by a, a, applying 
balance, but by the effort of balance in all those areas, it, it almost creates space for what you're talking about of, you know, the exercise of mm. putting yourself in a position to, you know, approach people. I wouldn't even say women, but I, I know that you're, you're more putting it towards like the, the women side of it, but just people in general that intimidate you and allowing there to be that hurdle to overcome. Because there is, it, there is a needle that moves. Like there's confidence yep. that comes after a while. And it's, it's interesting that you've put it in those words because, you know, sales guys, I, I was talking to, to a mentor of mine not too long ago, and he was talking about how, you know, uh, in the major leagues, when, when, when home run hitters go on a streak for more than just, you know, a, a week or two, mm-hmm. and, and that's not very long. We consider that, a, you know, a, a, the major league season is as long as it is. When these, these guys go on a, a, a streak of, you know, striking out for a short period of time, they got to bring in sports psychologists. They've got to get these people back on the horse, man. Like there's, there's shit that goes wrong in their brain that doesn't allow them to see that ball connect and to be those, those crushing hitters. Mm. And then when they are able to get back to it, it comes back so quickly. The same happens in sales. If you haven't closed a deal in a while, there's a rush that comes from that first close that reminds you of how easy that actually was. And the next one becomes easier and then easier and easier. So your example of approaching women and having that be, that the essence of that is something that totally resonates with me on every level. Mm. Putting yourself in a position to be uncomfortable so that you realize you're not that uncomfortable. Mm. And yeah. That, and that seems to address that core blink. You know, the, the crazy thing that happens, and, and you talk, you use the example of the tree trunk and the leaves and the branches and stuff. Mm-hmm. People will do some crazy shit to keep themselves busy so they don't have to face the facts of what's really going on and why they aren't succeeding. Mm-hmm. And I've recognized that even in my own life. There was, I spent years in the agricultural commodity space, literally thinking I was just learning the business and doing different things and, and being so close to these home run deals that would have changed my children's lives, my children's children's lives, not just that. And, but I, I, was, I would keep myself busy with all sorts of dumb shit when I felt underneath it all that this was something that I, I needed to kind of shift away from. And then when I finally mm-hmm. did, all this runway appeared in front of me and it was way different. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I like that, dude. I, I think that you're onto something with that. I think that's a powerful example. That's, that's a real world example that no, you can always find a way to enact that exercise right now. Yes, absolutely. Go, and, and, go to the school, corner store, talk mm-hmm. to the girl. I mean, wherever mm-hmm. it is, you can find people, chicks especially, to talk to, women, beautiful yeah. women. Yeah. And I mean, if you're, if, you're, if you're married, if you're taken, this might not apply to you or it could apply to you. I mean, it could get you in a <laughs> lot of trouble. Like, like hey, honey, honey, no, I'm, I'm doing it because I'm trying to get rid of my fear of rejection. That guy she in would, Rules of Success <laughs> told me I should do this. Yeah. She'd be like, uh, you're f- f- fuck off. <laughs> but, but, but at the same time, I mean, I, I, I truly believe that's the core. So can you focus on, um, on men or sales or desensitizing your fear of rejection from just everybody? Yeah, of course you can. Um, but I'm just saying from a, from a theoretical standpoint, um, your highest uh, point of leverage would probably be the females. Well, highest point of leverage makes it that you get the quickest result. Yeah. And and there's nobody on earth who says they aren't. Uh, well, there's a very few people on earth who, who aren't uh, nervous when going up to, uh, quote unquote, their version of a 10 out of 10. Uh, sure. It's just, it's just, it's just life. And, and any guy who says he's not, uh, not nervous or can walk up and talk to, 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 to any woman he wants with zero nervousness whatsoever is either uh, a serial killer, um, or extremely, extremely, um, uh, well evolved, <laughs> I guess you could say <laughs> very few people on earth for the rest of us humans, um, that, that exists maybe at different levels for different types of people and different situations, but, but it's still very real. So. You know, one of the takeaways that I'm having from our conversation, Mitch, is the reminder that in spite of the psychology that we could go down for hours and hours in any number of topics, that there is a legit physiology that affects our psychology. And that, you know, I, I'm a big believer in the idea that, you know, what you, what, what you allow on the stage of your mind has a huge impact on the results that you bring into your life. So if I'm envisioning myself as a success and I'm going through those things, I will feel inspired thoughts for action. And by doing those, by, by acting upon those inspired thoughts and having there be that connection between thought and action, that mm. I can literally achieve whatever I want. But in, inside of that really kind of crude and simplistic viewpoint of the law of attraction, I, I also see that you know, there's things on a day-to-day basis that can throw that game off and make it a lot more challenging to live in that realm. 
Mm. You, know, you know, emotions, things with relationships, being out of shape, you know, the, yep. the, the different, dare I say, energies that surround whatever my day-to-day is, those can affect the easiness or the difficulty to which I'm able to in- enact that simple equation. Think about it, bring it about through action. So to hear kind of what you're talking about here, it's, it's one of those, it's like a life hack, you know, it's like, hey, physiology is at play here. Let's not kid ourselves. So mm-hmm. this is a real simple way to go and to bypass that because you're playing into the physiology, which is basically the chemical center of what we are as men and uh, allowing us to kind of hack in and, and then deal with that fear. And next thing you know, we're just crushing what we want to crush. That's brilliant. Yeah, well said. You're the one that said it. <laughs> <laughs> your, your reiterations are, are, are well, well said. <laughs> well, right on, man. Well, hey, you know, we've, uh, I know you've got a lot of stuff going in. You're heading to Thailand tomorrow. I really appreciate you uh, carving out some time for me. This was kind of impromptu. You and I had been talking for a couple of weeks about uh, having you come back on the show and just reconnecting with the visitors, excuse me, the listeners of this show. And so I, I appreciate you both as a professional, as a friend, and I, I hope your, your trip uh, overseas kills it. And just, you know, thanks for, for doing the show again, man. This has been great. Yeah, thanks. I mean, everyone's always pissed off. They can never get a hold of me. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's because I, I do let, uh, I, I don't let everybody into my bubble. And so I'm, I'm, I, I consider you a friend and I'm always happy to come on and, and talk with you. So no problems at all. Sweet, dude. Well, before we go, how do uh, people reach out to you? What's the best way to do it? Opposedmedia.com or opposedmediablog.com. So that's O-P-P-O-S-E-D. So People okay. can go there. You can see uh, you can see different interviews of articles, videos, webinars, um, all sorts of stuff, testimonials, um, what we do, uh, my story, all sorts of things on there. If you want to get a hold of me to possibly do some work together, uh, we don't. I, I make it kind of difficult. I mean, you can't call me. You can't really get a hold of me. Uh, I would just say go to that website, and if you are interested enough in having me work on your project and make millions of dollars together. Then, uh, then I'm sure you'll find a way to hunt me down or, or hunt somebody on my team from there, maybe Macaulay or, uh, or Sabian or, or Adam. All right. Well, and, and as, a, as an extra buffer layer, if uh, any of you listeners of the show want to, uh, to talk with Mitch and to work with him based on what he said, uh, reach out to me as well, and we'll see if, if kind of knowing what Mitch's uh, his, his point is, we'll see if it's a fit there, and, and uh, maybe we can fast track something that would be really good for everybody. Oh, and anybody who hasn't downloaded the Rules of Success book, do it yet. I actually haven't read the book, but I know Bryce and I trust Bryce. And if it's actually that powerful as he says it is, it actually is. So if you haven't downloaded it, my God, go do it now. It's free. Science of Getting Rich, presented by Rules of Success, baby. It's all good. (laughs) Well, cool, Mitch. Um, I guess we're out of here, man. I appreciate your time and uh, enjoy your trip. Perfect. Thanks, man. Take care. Another great one's in the books. Many, many thanks to Mitch Miller of Opposed Media. Thanks, my friend, for coming on the show and doing what you do so well. Got a lot out of it this time. Like he said, go to opposedmedia.com to check out examples of some of his work. If you haven't downloaded The Science of Getting Rich presented by Rules of Success, go to rulesofsuccess.com and get it. Check out Apply the Science as well for the companion program helping you to bridge the gap between the time needed to get results and what you got to do. Tweet me at I am Mr. Prescott. If I'm missing anything, you know where to find me. Another episode, we're out. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Trent Outson, a.k.a. Six Sense. Thanks for tuning in to the Rules of Success podcast. Next week, join us again for another ride. In the meantime, make sure to reach out to us on social media. To tweet our host directly, try at I am Mr. Prescott or check out our website at rulesofsuccess.us. Until next time, take it a day at a time.